Today on Yester Kitchen, we are gonna make a fabulous chicken dish from one of my favorite cookbooks. You're gonna love it. Let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Jill and this is Yester Kitchen. We are serving up retro classics with a side of food history. Thank you so much for stopping by. So today, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen this book a couple times because literally it is one of my favorites. If you haven't, go ahead and follow me, but I'm gonna show you right now. 1975, How to Make It in the Sack. A cookbook for women who haven't made it. Is that fabulous? And of course you must see the back. This cookbook is, it's tiny, it's a paper, it's probably self-published, it was done by a woman named Jane George in 1975, and it's spectacular. And there is one recipe that is so great, I'm gonna show it to you right now, and then I will tell you about why this book is so awesome. Okay, so the first thing is, I have an oven on 375 ready to go, and I have my nine by 13 baking pan, and I have a stick of butter in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the baking pan in the oven and let the butter completely melt and we'll be right back. Okay, so while our butter is melting, this book. Okay, so today we are gonna make buttermilk pecan chicken. And it's like a riff on an oven fried chicken. It's fabulous. Okay, so this book, it's a little storybook and recipe book all in one. It is written by a housewife and her husband goes off to the office. She's a home housewife and he just hired a new secretary who is beautiful and voluptuous and the wife is very nervous. So the whole premise of this book is she decided that the best way to keep her husband's mind off of who she named Chesty, <laughs> I love this book, to keep, him, keep his mind off of Chesty, she would make him awesome lunches to take to work because before she was just making boring old sandwiches. So she figured this is the way. So the whole book is like, little bits every chapter starts with how it's going and it's of course it's going well because he's loving the dishes but it's just her desperate attempt to make sure that his eyes stay on his lunch and not his secretary and it's just it's just written well if you can ever get your hands on this book i would get it it's it's just fabulous okay now we are going to make this fabulous fabulous breading so in a pie plate i have one cup of flour and the next thing I'm gonna add is you're gonna want one cup of ground pecans. Here's what you want them to look like. Now, ground pecans are not something that you can go to the market and buy. Well, maybe you could, maybe it's out there, I'm sure it is, but I don't have it, so I grind my own. You can either use a food processor, you can use a blender, but it's kind of tough to get it out. So if you have a food processor, definitely use that. Or what I do is I use a coffee grinder and it just blends them up really quick. Now, one quick tip about grinding pecans, pecans are very high in oil. So you really wanna just pulse it until it's ground. You don't wanna just turn it on and let it go because you may wind up with pecan butter, which is fabulous, but will not work in this dish. So we have one cup of ground pecans, and as you notice, it's they're not dry because of that oil content. So you're gonna get a little bit of oil in there. So you wanna just kinda of take your whisk and very gently start incorporating all the ground pecans into the flour. And you're just gonna stir for a minute or two until it happens. Okay, so you're just gonna keep stirring. Now the flour is gonna start to absorb that oil, which is what you want. Now the pecans are never gonna get perfectly incorporated in, like you're gonna have little lumps of pecans, which is totally fine because it's gonna taste fabulous on your chicken. Okay, now we're gonna add a few little seasonings. We have a tablespoon of paprika, we have a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. And we have a quarter cup of toasted sesame seeds. Let me show you really quick how I toasted them. See, you just dry pan, just stir them around and you wanna babysit them because they will go from toasted to burnt very quickly. So here are my toasted pecans, pecans. Here are my toasted sesame seeds. I'm just so excited about this book. <laughs> and then you wanna just kind of incorporate all your seasonings right into your breading and you wanna take just a couple extra minutes because you really want everything really incorporated. Now I'm using a pie plate. You can use a regular plate. You can use a baking baking pan. You can use whatever you want that will work. Okay, so there we go. There's our pecan part. 
Now let's switch out our pecans so we can make what's gonna stick those pecans to the chicken. So this is super easy again. I have a cup of buttermilk. And oh yeah, you definitely wanna use buttermilk. It just has all the flavor. And you wanna add one egg. And then just kind of whisk that around. And just make sure it's all incorporated. And this is gonna be your delicious glue to hold your delicious pecan batter on. And I'm telling you, even when those sesame seeds pop, you're gonna love it. I mean, thank you, 1970s. And this book is just so fabulous. Okay, there we go. So now let's talk chicken. The original recipe calls for two whole chickens cut up. So each chicken has two breasts, two wings, two thighs, two drumsticks. Well, we're a dark meat family, so I decided just to get the drumsticks and the thighs. So here I have a package. Well, you never know how they come, right? This has 14 drumsticks and this package has four thighs. I might have too much chicken, but I'm not worried. So here, let's do this assembly. Actually, I'm gonna take off my rings because I know they're gonna get breaded. So here's all you do. You take your chicken and you dip it in your buttermilk and then you dip it in your pecans. Just make sure it's all over so it's crunchy and fabulous. And then you put it into your pan, just like that. Can you see that? No, you can't. I'm gonna put it up here for a second. You're gonna put it in your pan and you're gonna roll it around in the butter. And then you're gonna do the rest as much as the pan fits and I'll be right back when that's done. Okay, so I have leftover chicken, but you can easily melt another stick of butter because there's plenty of batter left and make yourself a second pan. I have eight drumsticks and I have two thighs ready to go. One last thing you need is a quarter cup of whole pecans. This part, if you really, you can skip if you want, but it kind of adds a beautiful little crunch and you just add your pecans right on top. Okay, this beautiful thing is gonna go in the oven 375 for about an hour and three quarters, an hour and 45 minutes. And we will be right back to see if our heroine is able to lure his husband away from Chesty. <laughs> we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so it's been an hour and a half and I actually lowered the temperature to 350 about, about a half hour into cooking because I noticed it was cooking a little too fast. So just watch it. But um, if you're gonna just use drumsticks, and thighs and not the breasts, then you probably want to just start cooking at 350 and do an hour and a half. But start checking your chicken after about an hour because some ovens vary and you don't want to overcook chicken. Anyway, you want to see? I know. Take a look. Look at this. Gorgeous, golden, pecans everywhere. What husband would not want this in their lunchbox? Do husbands really take lunch boxes anymore? Anyway, they did in the 70s, and this is still fabulous. Oh, and by the way, spoiler alert, she's able to keep her husband with these fabulous lunches. I love this book. As a matter of fact, there's some great recipes in here, so you might be seeing her again. Okay, let's plate it up. Whenever you serve, you definitely want a piece of each. Actually, I know I do. Look how beautiful that is. Does it get any better than that? Absolutely gorgeous. So save your husband and make him lunch. <laughs> or in my case, my son's about to drive back to Kansas to go to college. So all of this is getting packed up and going on a road trip. So if you have a marriage to save, or you just want to feed your family or company, this is fabulous. Give it a try. If you would like to explore more dishes from your childhood or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. I release new videos every Tuesday and Friday. In the meantime, here's some more retro dishes for you. And remember, every dish, even buttermilk, pecan, chicken, from this fabulous cookbook, has a story. I'll see you in the next video.